Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A very present help in the time of trouble. Come on, somebody. I'm glad he's not a coming help, but he's a present help. Some things the enemy need to destroy. Hallelujah. But God is a keeper. Hallelujah. Praise God. He knows how to deliver his people out of every trial. He knows how to deliver his people out of every adversity. Hallelujah. And trouble that the enemy sets up. And we know if we trust in him, he cannot fail. Hallelujah. And what a mighty God we serve. A God who cannot fail, who delivers, who heals, who sets free. Amen. Come on, somebody. God. Hallelujah. God. We encourage you to know him. We encourage you to what? To know him and the power of his resurrection. Because he wants you to know him. Yes. And he has put a lot of things in place for you to do so. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, yesterday we were teaching on this topic called blasphemy. The great sin or the great opposition. Blasphemy, the great sin or the great opposition. And we wanted to start out with the verse in First John, hallelujah, First John 5, was it verse 16? Praise God. And what John said here, and then move to some other scriptures to bring us in light to what we are seeing here. Hallelujah. First John 5, verse 16 said, If anyone sees his brother, if anyone what? sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death he will ask he will what? Ask. no he don't turn a blind and say well it don't lead to death so forget it <laughs> no he will ask in other words he will inquire he will go to that one and speak to that one about it that's all yes. and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death in other words there is point of restoration. Yes. And there's a call for repentance for that life, for that death to be warded off. But he says, but there's a sin leading to death. There's a what? Sin leading to death. Sin leading. All sin is sin. But say, there's a sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about that. I do not say that you should pray about it. In other words, that is not something you can pray and it just go away. Hallelujah. We didn't understand that one. And he says, it's not something you should even pray. That you come to know. <laughs> because some actions are irreversible in their effects. And I was giving a, a testimony about that, an example about that uh, other day when I said that a man can cut himself and the cup that he gave himself, he is able to go to the doctor and to get some help to reverse what he was trying to do, to kill himself. But if he cut his leg, if he cut his throat, he will not have enough time to get to yeah. the hospital to get help to save him from that. And so there are some actions that you set it into row. The consequences are irreversible. Understand what I'm saying? The consequences are irreversible. irreversible. And this is one that we are going to itemize today to show you on that point, in fact, that you can look upon, meditate on, think on, and become aware of that the enemy doesn't put you in such a trap. Hello, somebody. Amen. And so we're going to start with this topic called blasphemy. What are we talking about? Blasphemy, the great sin, the great opposition. Hallelujah. We're starting with 
uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to 37. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to 37. Study on the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You're studying on what? The blasphemy this against the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And Matthew 12, verse 31 to 37, it says, Therefore I say to you, every sin, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven me. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven me. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven me. And there is the Holy Spirit. And he says, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age, come on, or in the age to come. Notice, he didn't just say, speak against the Holy Spirit. Or look at the word here, speaks in present continuous tense. Means that it's not just a one act, but a continuous deliberate act. And it says it will not be forgiven him either in this age or the age to come. He says, either you make the tree good and it's true good, or else make the tree bad and it's true bad. But for a tree is known by its fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. Fruit. So yes, it could be a bad tree before and become a good tree now, but it can't be a good tree with good and bad in it. Uh -huh. And we want to point out that one, and that is something we can point out to you in more scriptures. So Jesus said to them, a tree is known by its fruit. So he's showing you what measurement, what rule of thumb to use to judge whether one is good or bad. Hallelujah. He said, brood of vipers. That's what he called them. Based on their response to him. He says, how can you be evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Look at that. He called them vipers because vipers, serpents, snakes. Hallelujah. Have a poisonous tongue. And Christ has been under their tongue. And he says there, then it is poison that comes out of them and he calls them brood or generation of vipers. He's saying then your fathers were like that and your father, fathers were like that and you come now like that. Look at that, brood of vipers. He says, how can you be evil? So it says your state has a lot to do with what you put out. Has a lot to do with your position, your high position. And it says, how can you be evil? Speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what is full in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. Praise God. And so it says a good man, a what? A good man out of the good treasures of his heart, bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart is talking, bringing forth evil things. He says, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak. In other words, this word is idle because he don't intend to say it. It's idle because he just draw the word from any means or he feels convicted to say it. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus didn't speak like that. That's right. Jesus says the words I speak, they are not mine. But what I hear the Father speak, you don't say what I hear other men speak. He says what I hear the Father speak, that I speak. Yes. Come on. So any other man is supposed to must be other men who are hearing accurately from God. You understand that? So he says what, what, what he says, every idle word that made me speak. 
they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Come on now. And so, so look at that your words are setting the pace of your salvation or your condemnation. Yes. The word of God says it. That by your, you, when you believe, he says, you are saved. He says, with your mouth, confession is made. With the mouth, what? Confession is made unto salvation. With your heart, one believes unto righteousness. You believe unto righteousness. You should not believe unto iniquity, unto corruption. You believe unto righteousness, that righteous things come out of your mouth. Hello. And it sets the path where you're going. Yes. It sets the destination. Hallelujah. Yes. So that's what Paul said in Romans 10 verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, in other words, your mouth is involved in your salvation. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what? Believe in your heart. Your heart is involved in your salvation. Here it is, heart and mouth. Heart believe, mouth confess. Yes. Hallelujah. But who are you confessing? The Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There are many other things may call truth out there. But we know the truth. There is no lie in truth. Yes. Hallelujah. And so Christ is the embodiment of all that is true. There is no lie in him. Hallelujah. And some things people speak as truth. A lot of lie in it. And they still call it the truth. But the truth of God is the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Praise God. And it says that. No, no, you declare that it says, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. salvation. You see that? Yes. Heart and mouth. Yes. Come on now. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Whoever believes on who? That's on Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ cannot lie. Yes, sir. So if you believe on him, you believe on his teaching. Yes. If you believe on his teaching and believe on who he sent. Yes. And you believe on who he sent, you can follow them. Mm -hmm. And know that what they're saying is true. Yes. As we believe Jesus, what you're saying is true, we can believe them. Because Jesus was speaking on behalf of another, yes. the Father. And now we are speaking on behalf of Christ. Yes. And Jesus doesn't expect any less. Hello. Amen. In fact, he expects more. Ah, come on. Because he says, great works than these. We shall do. Come on now. You see that? So we see here Jesus spoke, spoke in that scripture. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 12. That about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit from verse 31 to 37. And we also will look at another scripture in Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 27. And, and John 27 to 30. Hallelujah. So from 3, verse 20 to 30, actually, we look to all those scriptures. Hallelujah. So it says, then the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. Huh? But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, he's out of his mind. Now these were relatives to Jesus. So he said, his own people. And Jesus had brothers and sisters that did not believe he was the Christ. Mary had other children and they didn't believe he was the Christ. Come on. They even went out to, to set hold on him, to buy him one time. Because they said, like, something wrong with his head. The things they hear him talking out here. 
No man did ever hear speak that way. So something was wrong with me. I'm a demon. Come on. He's out of his mind. His scribes came down from Jerusalem and said, He has been the Bible, a chief demon. And Allah said that, and by the ruler of demons, he cast out demons. In other words, he's using demons to cast out demons. So, so he called them to himself. Jesus called them to himself and said to them in Proverbs, How can Satan cast out Satan? Good question. He said, If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But it has an end. It says, No one can enter a strong man's house and plug this good unless he first what? Binds a strong man, then he is. He will plunder his house. He's talking to them that he, you know he's referring to Satan's house. The world as Satan's house. And say you can't enter Satan's house and deliver one out of his, his hand except someone stronger come. Hello? And bind him. Because if you don't bind him, you won't get any out of his house. Come on now, because this strong man keep his goods. He hold on to them tightly. And he says, no, unless he first binds the strong man, then he will what? Plunder his house. Oh, praise God. That's why they can't plunder me. Hallelujah. Because they have to be stronger than me. And God will be ten times stronger than the rest. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And you got to understand that one. Hello. Amen. So he said, As surely I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the sons of men. And what blasphemy they may utter. He says, But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Because they said, What? He has an unclean spirit. In other words, they are not just saying Jesus is mad now or Jesus is doing something that they think is not altogether in his, he's not altogether in his head that will be blaspheming against him. What they are saying the spirit by which he's doing it is an evil spirit. And that's what he was talking about when he says blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's one thing to say, well, why you this man shot and he black and he hit me. <laughs> any assault or any, any um, negative report you want to make against me in that aspect is fine. You will be forgiven. But he said, but if you're going to talk against the spirit that is using me now, yes. and say the Holy Spirit that is using me, is an unclean spirit. Now that charge is not against me. But it's against the spirit that is moving in me. Hallelujah. And is dwelling in me. And it says such a charge against you is irreversible. What's the thing? Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So it says such a charge is what? Irreversible because they are now calling the spirit that is using unclean. He has an unclean spirit. Come on, look in Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. I want you to take note of these verses, different gospels account of the same story of blasphemy, the Holy Spirit. And this one is in chapter 12 of Luke, from verse 1 to 12, it says, In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trembled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, who is saying first of all to? Disciples. His disciples. What did he say to them? 
Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. What is that leaven? Look at it. What is that leaven? Which is hypocrisy. Hallelujah. Which is what? So it, they, they are, they are, they, it's not just what they say in order to amount, but it's what they're doing. Watch the thing. And he says they, 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 because you learn from the teacher not just what he said, yeah. but you learn from the teacher by what the teacher do. And that's why Jesus could say to them at one point, you can obey what they say, but don't do what they do. Remember that? Yes. So that's why the Lord often called them hypocrites. Because they were saying one thing and doing another. Is that so? Yes. So the Lord was saying to his disciples, who was he speaking to? His disciples. That's what he said in verse 1. He began to say to his disciples, first of all, that he was he's drawing up those in his house first. So be weird. Can you under my teacher? Not everybody under my teacher. Come on. So first person he draws up in this is his disciples. No, sir. And he says to his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. He says, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden, that will not be known. Come on. In other words, a point of exposure is coming. Yeah. Um, Jesus made that statement where he says, wisdom is known by her children. Yes. So he's saying that no matter the talk, no, watch and see what come of it. Everybody in that way, look, 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 guilty at first, but wait, give it some time. The truth will come out. Hello. Verse 3 says, Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark, because they were saying a lot of things behind closed doors, you know, and some wolf say it on it, and you put in a wolf say it to the face, no? yeah, because it's closed doors, they say it, and because I'm not on their page. I might just see Papa once now, and we may go look, but we're not there, but we know I'm here every day. Morning and night, so they can't come with them bold. But they're not bold, so yet they're waiting on them to catch them bold. Because yeah. some people have to get boosted before they get bold, you know. So they have to talk to their friend now before they can come and talk to all they must really talk to. Yeah. So when they talk to them, get bold. I'm already here bold as they like can be. Right, so come let me teach them boldness. Amen. So he says, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Nothing covered that will not be revealed, yes. and nothing hidden that will not be no. known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark, that is in secret, will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear, what you have spoken what? In the ear means they were saying secretly. He says, in inner rooms, we'll be proclaimed where? The house stops. Yeah, man, I was stopping there, I don't know. <laughs> I said, I have a mic, you know, no mic by internet. <laughs> I don't have any clarity, you hear it? You hear me? Okay. He says, he says, and I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid, because he knows. When these things are exposed, threats will come. You get the thing? Threats will come. That because you're exposing them, you get it, sister? Because you're exposing them, that's why threats will come. And that's why the Lord said, No, no, but I am wrong because threats come. He says, You must know that the Father knows to care for you. Come on, because light is there. We are light of the world. We are not salt of the world. So light of the world is there to expose things in the world. I say, you don't like light to stay by itself. 
We are like the Tushro to light up everybody in the house. Correct? Yes. Right, so he, he tells us that whatever was spoken in the dark is going to come be heard in what? In the light. See that in verse 3? Yes. But what they have spoken in the ear in the rooms will be proclaimed on house stuff. It's a secret by us. Huh. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. Because what is that saying now? Is the common say that they have today in farm of the day. Can you let us sell this? You see the thing now? And so he says, don't be afraid. Remember Jesus is still speaking to his disciples. Yes. And he said to them, my friends, I say to you, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. That's why they will try their tricks. You get the thing? But he said, after that, they have no more that they can do. In other words, even if they succeed to kill your body, they can do no more. And you're serving a Lord that know to raise up this body. Yes, Come on, somebody. So what more it say? How it says, but I will show you whom you should fear. In other words, if you are going to fear because you are come and do something to your body that you are quiet to your body, I say no. He says, no, I will show you who you must fear that you have to do what they say. Because the one who is using fear says you are killed by this because he wants to shut your mouth. Because he said, dead man can't talk. That's why you don't no witness. You get it? But, but, but when Cain killed Abel, no witness now I left you. But God still fine. Cain has still sentenced him. Because God said, I hear Cain crying out to me from the ground. I hear his blood talking to me. Lord Jesus. He didn't know the blood could not talk. Hallelujah. The righteous man blood can talk. Hallelujah. When he came, he still can talk. Hello. Yes, man. And he cried out that there was no judge, no jury, no court, no police, and still God really sentenced and came. What do you say? So that's the same God we serving now. Hallelujah. God the Lord said, I heard this blood, your brother's blood, cry out to me from the ground. I heard your brother's blood cry out to me from the ground. Come on, somebody. Look at that. So the righteous blood and not ordinary blood. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. So tell them, say, try with this one and find out. Hallelujah. God, they try with Jesus already. And things say, put down and he's still the dark. Over 2,000 years later, he's still talking out. Hello, somebody. So he knew and then he said that you've got to understand that they will try to do that, but they said, don't fear the one who can destroy the body. Huh? Yeah. And after a kid has no power to do nothing more, but he says, fear the one who after he has killed and power to what? Cast into hell. After he came, have the power to what? Cast into hell. So what going into hell after he came? It's not the body, you know. It's the spirit. And he said, there's a place here for that. And over here already, Jesus gave testimony and in Luke chapter 16 and tell them, say, I don't know how nice. It's not a party they don't hear of him. And you're going to find out first class. Hello. If you don't repent. Yes. So he says then, he will cast it to hell. So he says, I say to you what? Fear him. In other words, if you are going to be afraid, fear the Lord more than them. Yes. That's what he's saying. Fear the Lord what? More than them. More than them. The Lord can do more damage than them. Yes, Come on now. And what he said to you further for you to understand yourself. Verse 6 and 7, he said, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coin? He said, Look at the little price that paid for five sparrows. Five sparrows sold for two copper coin. He says, Yes, not even one of those sparrows is forgotten before God. So he says, Even the very ear and your head are all numbered. He says, Do not fear, therefore, in other words, you must not be afraid. Yes, 
God is not suggesting this. He's commanded this. And said you should not be afraid. Because what? You are more valuable than many sparrows. Come on, somebody. Hello. So I say, man, if you're far more valuable than God, God mark every sparrow, no matter how cheap man considers the life of a sparrow, and he will say, five sparrow, kill five sparrow for just two come of time. The Lord said, man, you are worth more than many sparrow. And even of those five sparrow, he says, not one of them is forgotten by the Lord. So he said, only oh, God will forget you. And you are more valuable than many sparrows. Come on. You get it? Hallelujah. So it says, also I say to you, whoever confesses me, look at that. Confess who? Jesus Christ. It's not confess negative report. And confess back more against your brothers and sisters in the Lord and say, that is confess Christ. No. Christ is not bad report. Christ is good report. It's truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything outside of Christ should be revealed. Yes. Hello. But we got to understand that it's Christ we stand to reveal it. We don't stand in the world to speak against things in the world. Or stand in the world and speak against things in the church. You need to stand in Christ. Amen. He is the light of the world. Yes. It's the light we use to expose things in the darkness. Yes. When those in the darkness try to expose things in the darkness, that's like Satan trying to cast out Satan. And the Lord said, that now you stand. Hallelujah. So he tell you already, you need to move into truth. But you must move into truth. Truth, man. Baby. So confess him, Jesus Christ, before men. Him, the Son of Man, also will confess before the angels of God. And when you stand for Christ and declare the nature and character, and word of Christ. Hello, it's not philosophy and view and opinion they clear and call it Christ. It was declared in nature, character, and word of Christ to confess Christ. Get it? And he says, he who denies me before men, his nature, his character, his word before men, will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven. But if he will blasphemes against what? The Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. Come on now. And two more verses. It says, now when they bring you to the synagogue and magistrates and authorities, and do not worry about how or what you should answer, or what you should say, what he says you should do. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour. The Holy Spirit will not teach you in that very hour what you are to say. Come on now. Blaspheme. What does blaspheme mean? And the word blaspheme is used as blaspheming. Blaspheming. Blasphemed. Hallelujah. It's, it, the meaning of it is to show contempt. To what? Show contempt. Show contempt our disrespect for God are sacred things, especially in speech. In other words, when it says sacred things, it is things are persons that God regard as holy. What's the things? So it says, when it says sacred things, what is speaking of? Things are persons that the Lord regard as holy. Holy. So it says, blaspheme is to show contempt, disrespect, or disregard for God or sacred things, especially in speech. Second definition is to utter profanities. To utter what? Profanities. Profanities, profanities mean to treat something sacred with irreverence, vulgar or irreverent action or speech. Vulgar or irreverent action or speech. What's the other one now? Praise God. It's also speaking of curses. Curses means obscene expression of anger. 
obscene what? Expression. Expression of anger, disgust, or surprise. Oh, to abuse, to what? Abuse. To abuse someone with obscenities. To abuse someone with obscenities. Blasphemy or this blasphemous behavior or language also carries a definition called blasphemous libel law. Blasphemous libel law states that is the crime of committing, the crime committed of by a person insults, is crime committed if a person insults, offends, or vilifies the deity, Christ, or the Christian faith. If someone what? Vilifies. Vilifies is a word, a compound word means to, to deem worthless. And vili means worthless and fasir from the suffice. Means to make. It's the word means to make worthless. Vilify. To revile with abusive language and malign. To, uh, to revile with what? Abusive language. Abusive language. Malign. Come on. Now we already use the key verse here. Jesus was saying to them, yeah, you, you can vilify things that you want to say personally about Christ, but the way he talk and the way it seems like he don't care much of people and it seems like, but when you start to address the spirit by which he's operated by, you're going into a different category. And now he says you are not just blaspheming him, but you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit who is leading and using him. Come on now. And he says that is an irreversible action that carries irreversible consequences. Come on. Yes. In other words, he says, by that act, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and you continue to do so, you will be cut off. Hello. Yes. Come on. So Jesus did speak from that Matthew 12, verse 31 to 37 that we read earlier. And he said the point of reason that Jesus used for them is in verse 33, where he says, Either you make the tree good, and it's true good. Either you say it's a good tree that is putting forth good fruit, or you say it's a bad tree putting forth evil fruit. But it can't be a good tree that sometimes it good, sometimes bad. Because that's not how the law classified things as good. As you remember, good from even the beginning in Genesis, the law in Genesis 2, the law told them the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they should not eat from it. Come on. In other words, God would not have them eat from such a tree because He didn't tell them, say, well, pick the good ones and leave the bad ones. He says, no, don't eat from that one at all. Yes, sir. Because it have a mixture. It have a what? A mixture. a mixture of good and evil. Yes. And a mixture of good and evil is still not good. Yes. And it is a common saying around the place that they say, everybody have good and evil in them. Little of the devil and little of God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus didn't teach that. Jesus' teachings oppose that. Yes. Jesus' teachings what? Oppose that. that teaching that everyone of good and evil in them. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus said in verse 35 of Matthew chapter 12, he says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. So Jesus spoke about a good man. A what? Yes. A what? Good man. Good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. Good things. And then he speaks about an evil man. Yes. He don't speak up to be the same. He said an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring forth 
evil things come on them. But Jesus was saying to them in verse 24 that their words towards him, their words towards Jesus was evil because their hearts were evil. Did you get that one? Look in verse 34. Jesus regarded them as being generation of vipers. Brood of vipers. So he said, their heart is evil. That's why what's coming out of their mouth is evil. He says, the brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? How can you, being evil, speak good things? That's Jesus' teaching. Come on now. How can you, being evil, speak good things? So that's why there has to be a change of heart for you to become good. When you can't have the same evil heart, try to do good. Ah, I want to talk to somebody here. What's the thing? From your heart is cold, the communication out of your mouth will also be corrupt. Yes. Hello. Amen. And we want you to understand that principle. Amen. Amen. So the Lord said to them, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring forth evil things. Because the word of God said, out of the abundance of the mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. speaks. So Jesus already made that point and was now telling them they can judge them then by their fruit. They can judge them by their fruit, by what comes out of their mouth. He can declare them what is going on in their heart. Come on, somebody. That's how the Lord gave them the judgment in verse 33. Remember the judgment he gave, the point of two of thumb of judgment, he says, you either make the tree good, and what comes from it is fruit good, or else you make the tree corrupt. Look at that word, corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known, the tree is known by its fruit. Come on now. Hallelujah. And he says then, the charge will be in verse 36. Here he says, I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. This act of, this act against the Holy Spirit seems like a one-time done deal. In Matthew 12, verse 31 and 32. But further studies show that we will uncover insight in the topic and repeat that deeper understanding to this statement and more specifically to this position. The question is then what is blaspheming? Blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Answer Blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is the continual and deliberate rejection of the Spirit's witness of the what? Spirit. Spirit's witness to Christ, to His Word, and to His convicting work against sin. To Christ, huh? Yeah. The Holy Spirit's witness to Christ has been rejected. That means they, they, they are rejecting the one the Holy Spirit is using to witness to them. And they are, they are rejecting the word of God to his word. And they are rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit which is to convict them of their sin. And that's what, what he says. That continuous deliberate rejection is blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. You get it? And no one can be saved without the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Yes. No one can be saved without the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Now look at this one. He 
He says in John 16, verse 5 to 15, speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was speaking about the work. the work of the Holy Spirit. And he said in St. John 16, verse 5 to verse 15, he says, But well, now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? Because I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will what? This is the work he will do. He will convict the world of sin. He will what? Convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now notice, he is not coming to convict the saints. Now some believe they get the Holy Spirit to now convict the saints. They get the Holy Spirit to now judge the apostle and judge the pastor and judge the brother. God, that's what they get the Holy Spirit for. That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not testify against Christ. It bears witness of Christ. It what? It bears witness of Christ. And Christ is the truth. There is no sin in him. There is no lie in him. Watch the thing now. So he says, what does the Holy Spirit come to do? Convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And then he gives the detailed explanation of why of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Why is he convicting them of sin? Convicting them of righteousness? Convicting them of judgment? Look at what it says in verse 9 to 11. Of sin because they do not believe in me. They did not believe in the one who was sent. That's why they still remain in their sin. You get it? Yes. Because he came to take away their sin. But they don't believe in him. Come on now. So those who say I believe in Christ but I still keep sinning, they don't believe in him. Because if you believe in him, you know Christ is the end of the law. The law speaks to sin. Christ didn't come to give you a pass so you can keep on sinning with no penalty from the law. Ah, he come to take those sins away and to put you in a position of righteousness, right standing with God, filled you with his Holy Spirit, that you will now live new lives unto God in true holiness and righteousness. Amen. Come on now. So he says, you are being given the Holy Spirit for you to convict the world, not for you to convict each other in the house of God. Some people don't know the work of the Holy Spirit, but they want to teach. And I pray for them, because they added to the trouble out here, the confusion that's going on out here. He says, they convict the world of sin and also of what? Righteousness. Why? Because I go to my father and you see me now what I was talking about is ascension. When he ascended, where was he placed? At the right hand of the father. What did the father say to him? Sit at my right hand until I make your want. So despite how he came to demonstrate his love towards the whole world, the father's love towards us while we're yet in sin, many still are his enemies. Paul talk about that where he says, he says in tears that many of them are enemies of the cross. Come on. Because they have not regarded that the cross is a testimony for sin to end in your life. Not for the sin to continue and punish. But for you to, for you to be an end to that sinful lifestyle and a starting of a new life in Christ was the testimony of his resurrection. Hello? You got that? Right, so it says of, of sin 
God they don't believe in me. That's why I don't believe in this sin. And he's going to pack me up with sin. I'm righteous because I go to my father and you see me no more. He says, the life is already lived before you in that righteousness and you are not embracing that life. So you be convicted about the life in righteousness that you did not embrace. So it says he's convicting them of righteousness and also of what? Judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. In other words, the ruler of this world, Satan, has already been overthrown. Yes. Word of God says he, he crushed the head of the serpent and he will bruise his heel. So the, the crushing, the piercing and the, and the bruising that he received at the cross, he says that was for our healing. Come on. And what did we need healing for? It was just a matter of sickness when he says, by your his stripes you're healed. He's speaking about sin. Come on. By his stripes you're healed. He's talking about sin. He's talking about what he suffered on the cross. It's more than just about your body getting healed. It's about your soul salvation. Hello, suffer. And he says that soul is not saved in sin. It's saved from sin. And it's also, he's not saving you with sin. Ha -ha. He come to save you from your sin. Amen. Praise God. So he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot what? You can't bear it now. Come on. So the question here, he showed that the work of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Yes. They are testifying against because Jesus came to speak against their sin. Jesus wasn't speaking and telling them, oh, what you do is all right. No, he was speaking against sin. Remember what Jesus said to his brothers when the brothers came and said, man, you need to go to the feast and do some work and let them see you so that they can run and follow you. Jesus says, you can go to the feast because they were not love you. But they hate me because I want because I testify against their works. Jesus wasn't come to an insane. He was testifying against sin. He was what? Testifying, testifying against sin. That's why he said the world didn't love him. And that's what led to his crucifixion. Come on now. Because he said they were out of darkness. More than light because their deeds are evil. Are evil. Come on. So the light is not there to make them continue in evil. It's to expose the evil work that they repent. Yes. And they repent is not merely saying sorry. It's to change course of actions and thoughts towards that actions. So true repentance produces true salvation. Yes. Hello. There's no true salvation without true repentance. Hello. So he said, what was that? That was it? Oh, that's not it. We want to be his brothers. <laughs> Praise God. In John 7, he was speaking with his brothers. And he said to them, you can go. Look at that, what he said. In verse, John 7, verse 5. Yes, praise God. From verse 5 to 8, or 5 to 10. Yes, 5 to 8. He says, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Look at that with Jesus. Even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come. Your time is always ready. Look at that. Your time is always ready, Jesus said. But my time has not yet come. Verse 7 of John chapter 7. He says, the world cannot hate you. The world what? Cannot hate you. Why it cannot hate you? Because he says, it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. Anyone that is speaking against the works of the world will become their friend. And he says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Those who love the world and its 
evil system, the love of the Father is not in them because all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And these things are not of the Father. So he's telling you, you've got to change your position, yeah? Yes. So the Lord said, you can't go ahead because they love you. But they don't love me. Uh, come on, somebody. You're free to chop it everywhere with them and it's fine. But when, when I come along, it's not fine for them at all. I'm, I'm like throwing water on their party. I'm chilling up the party, man. Whatever I'm going to go do, I'm speaking out against it. So it's not going nicely when I'm there. But you, as a silent partner, do well with them. Hello. So it's a one who rejects and opposes the voice. One who what? Rejects and opposes the voice of the Holy Spirit. Removes him or herself from the one. The only person who can really lead him or her to true repentance and receive forgiveness. Come on. It's the Holy Spirit that leads you to true repentance and receiving forgiveness. Yes. You can't manifest true repentance in your heart without the Holy Spirit. Amen. The process leading to blasphemy, to blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is as follows. Number one, the first process is grieving the Holy Spirit. Is what? Grieving the Holy Spirit. And we look at Ephesians 4 from verse 29 to 31. Looking at Ephesians 4 from verse 29 to 31. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, let no corrupt, no what? Corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. In other words, words that proceed out of your mouth, those who hear you should not become corrupt by it. Come on. And Jesus' words were not corruptive. Hello. His words were pure. Corrupt people heard his words and twisted it because they had corrupt minds and hearts and went further away from truth because of it instead of closer than truth because their hearts and minds were corrupt. Come on now. You got it? Yes. But he says, you as one who is of the Lord, you are the one who are connected and the body of Christ must not let any corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is what? Good for necessary edification. In other words, it should minister grace to the hearers. That's where it says that. That it may impart what? Grace, grace to the hearers. In other words, grace is releasing the power of God unto salvation. Is that? It's not releasing fear. It's increasing faith. You hear that one? Yes. Fear brings torment and suspicion. Huh? Yes. And we're not here to make each other suspicious of each other and afraid of friendship, afraid of relationship, afraid of marriage, afraid of having children. No, we don't teach those kind of things. We're not the ten spies that come back with a current report that made each you know, Israel spend 40 years in the witness of God allowed something to die out just to go in the land. Because they were corrupted by the words that the ten spies came and said. All the twelve saw the same thing in the land. So why did ten come up with a different report from Joshua and Caleb? Joshua and Caleb saw that there were giants in the land, but they didn't come back to the people telling them, yes, it's, it's fruitful, it's prosperous, but there's giants in the land, we can't take it. And call that reality. We just being real. That's just the truth. No, that's not the truth. If it leads people to corruption, that's not the truth. Truth don't lead you to corruption. It leads you to life and peace and righteousness in God. Yes. Come on now. So he says, they are a different report or something. And we read that from Numbers chapter 13. Hallelujah. 
And then they, 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 this brother God said in verse 32, Numbers 30, verse 32, they gave the children of Israel a what? A bad report of the land. Number six, they gave them a real report. No, the, the report that Joshua and Caleb came back with, never talking about no giant sun with two small in their eyes. But they thought that no, you're skipping out some things and they need to hear that. But what was behind them hearing that is for them to lose faith in possessing the land. Yes. That would not be a good report. Because God already gave them the good report for them in Egypt that they would possess the land. So anything against that word who didn't come from God. Come on now. It came from the devil. Yes. But they thought they would be more real. Uh -huh. hear some people say, yeah, let's get real now. We know the word of God says, but let's get real. What they really say to you, forget what the word of God say and watch what your eyes see. And this is what I tell you. That's deceptive. Come on, somebody. And it's the devil that talks like that. Telling you to forget what the word of God said and trust your own mind and your eyes and your ears. Trust your own heart. Don't mind what the word of God said. Because the word of God can tell you things that you aren't seeing. Tell you things you aren't feeling. Tell you things that don't seem like it match with the reality of what is before you. But the word of God is always true. Yes. Come on now. Amen. You get it? Now those who are true believers know that, but those who are not true believers don't know that. They still rely on their own natural senses to feel the total. The word of God says the natural man cannot receive and understand the, 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 the spiritual things because they are spiritually deserved. Come on now. You got that? So they came. They came with what? A bad report. What was their report? In verse 32 of Numbers 13, they said, The land through which we are born as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Listen to that. What a report. It devours those who live in here. Come on. All the people who we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw the giants, descendants of Anak, come from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Not in their sight, you know. In our own sight, we were like grasshoppers. Do you hear the statement? And so we were in their sight. He says, so we see ourselves as grasshoppers in, their, in our eyes, so we know it's so in their eyes too. Come on now. Listen to the report. And they said they've been real. They've been real. The other guys them who are here in front of them have not been real, man. They've been super spiritual. And they don't want to be super spiritual. They like, they like practical and real things, so that's practical. Uh -huh. Let's see where their practical lead to. Come on. And it says, so it said in chapter 14, verse 1, so all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Come on. And all the children of Israel complained against who? Notice they don't complain now against God. The belief that God still right, but the belief says Moses get it wrong. It's the leader that gets it wrong, man. We need a new leader. <laughs> uh, we don't problem from the let's say no one gets it on evil. They will just lead themselves. Yeah. Yes, man, lead yourself. It's so that it is. Now the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, here they talk. If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. My God. Now they are cursing themselves, I don't even know it. 
Watch me, watch it first. He says, they said, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us see, let our leader return to Egypt. He get Moses. <laughs> Lord Jesus. My God, this thing I'm so long ago and you still see the Levi in the house of God be in the same way. That's why we tell them, say, you don't have to do it in time. And you don't have to do it in peace. You have to do it in spirit. Yes. That you are leading him to. That is influencing your actions. The same response will show because that same spirit don't change. It's either of the Lord or of the devil. And it will still have the same response. Hello. And verse 5 says, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Yes. And but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, those were the other two of the spies that were there. The son of Jephthah. He says, When who were among those who had spied out the land, two of them were close. These men are grieved with the response. And they spoke to all the congregation of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy, huh? to spy out, is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. It says, A prosperous land. He says, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. He never said they are giants, he said, they are our bread. Oh, Jesus. And I was there just food to us. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Come on, somebody. And all the congregation, all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Eh? All the congregation said to stone them. Why? Because they come with a good report. They don't want to hear the name Joshua and Caleb. Only saying it's out of loyalty to Moses. It's not to God. It's loyalty and bias they talking like that. It's not faith. What's the response that we get in today? And see how this scripture comes to bear with it. <laughs> he eh? It says, Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I performed among them. Come on, somebody. And he says, I will strike them with the pestilence and discern them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it. For by your might you brought these people up from among them. And they will tell it to them, says the Lord, They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, and that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them. You go before them in a pillar of cloud by day, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if you kill these people as one man, then the nations will have heard of your fame. Nations will have heard of your fame, will what? Huh? The nations which now heard of the fame will speak, we'll speak saying because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land which he swore to give them. Therefore he killed them in the wilderness. Now the Lord says because the Lord was not able to do it, that's why he killed them. So Moses was saying to the Lord, your reputation is at stake here, Lord. It's not so much the people, 
What's your name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your name. And now the Lord, now when Moses says in verse 17, Now I pray, Lord, I pray that the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, shame. The Lord is long suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he who know, he by no means spares the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and the fourth generation. Hallelujah. Pardon the iniquity of this people. I pray according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to what? According to whose word? Moses were the same one they were about to stone and say, let us have your leader. Was the same one who interceded on their behalf to spare them. The Lord Jesus. But what did the Lord say in verse 21? But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swear to their fathers, now shall any of those who reject me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, because he has what? A different spirit in him, because he has what? A different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Come on, somebody. Somebody in God and praise me. So we see that why they did God swore they will not enter the land. Because of sin, because of their unbelief. Come on now. Because of their ingratitude towards what He had already done for them. They see not to acknowledge the Lord and His power in their midst. But to do operate of their own mind, yes. going after their own heart's desire rather than pursuing God's desire for them. Anyone who continues to do that will be cut off. If you hear that, yes. I say, anyone who continues to do that will be cut off. Cut off. Hello. So we are reading that the first thing in the process of blasphemy the Holy Spirit is what? Grieving the Holy Spirit. And we read that from Ephesians 4, verse 29 to 31. And it says, corrupt communication can corrupt the whole camp. And some people don't like to talk what the Lord is saying. They like to talk what they feel and says the Lord, they feel say, we don't carry insight. It's not from the devil, from the Lord, it's from the devil. That kind of wisdom the word of God says sensual and earthly and divine. But the wisdom of God is pure. It's, it's a, it is first pure. And it is willing to yield. And it is gentle. Huh? Hello. And so he's speaking of that wisdom. It's not a, it's not a early kind of wisdom. It's a godly kind of wisdom. And God wants us to have that kind of wisdom. What you say? Here it is in verse James 3, verse 14 to 17. He says, But if you have bitter envy, you have what? Bitter envy and self seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Because some know when they have it and they lie, like they don't have it. But they lie against the truth. He says, This wisdom does not descend from above. Where does that wisdom come from? He says, It is earthly, 
sensual, that is fleshly or carnal, and it is also what demonic means it's of the devil. And verse 16 says, For where envy and self seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But look at the wisdom we must have now. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Is first what? Pure. Is first pure? Then what? Peaceable. Gentle. Yes. Willing to yield. Full of mercy and good fruit. Without what? Partiality. And without hypocrisy. hypocrisy. We can know the wisdom of God even from the word of wisdom. Come on, somebody. And it's many people tell you, well, the word of God said, you know, but you must be wise. But they tell you to forget the word and trust wisdom. And that wisdom that tells you to forget the word is not the wisdom of God. It's the wisdom of this world, tailored by the devil himself. And he's telling you, anyone that follows that wisdom, will be disqualified from the kingdom. Hello? Because that surely is not of God. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Spirit who dwells within the believer, the Holy Spirit who what? Dwells within the believer. Is a person, is a who? A person who can experience intense grief uh, and sorrow, just as Jesus himself did. Jesus himself experienced intense grief or sorrow when he went over Jerusalem and grieved on other occasions. You can look at that in Matthew 23 verse 37. Matthew 23 verse 37. And it says when Jesus was saying there, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets, and stone stones were sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. You were not willing. Come on, somebody. That was intense grief and sorrow Jesus was bearing over that city. Come on, in Mark 3, verse 5. Say Mark 3, verse 5. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by what? Hardness. By the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. As he was said, he was said to them, Is it right to do good on the Sabbath? And they didn't want to answer because the answer would not be them. And he said to them, Don't any one of you with your sheep fall in the hole of you. Get help and take it out even on the Sabbath day. He knew they were doing it. And they know they did it. But they still want to answer because the answer will come with them. Yes. And still they were grieved at him, healing the man whose hand was withered on the Sabbath day. That grieved him. Come on. He says, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. And just see the man and left them. But they blocked the door, or they might seek to kill him. Yes. Come on now. So that's another occasion in Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, as he drew near, as he drew up, near. near he saw the city and went over it. Come on. He saw the city and went over it, went over it saying, If you had known, huh? if you had known, even you, 
especially in your in this your day. If you are known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. That grieved Jesus. He grieved them. Come on. In John 11 verse 35. Another point where Lazarus had died. Hallelujah. The Lord gave news and reports to them when they sent messengers to him. And told them this sickness is not unto death. But they were pleased that he did not come. He just sent back a message. And Lazarus died. Now Jesus was there. And all he kept hearing them saying, Lord, if you had been here, he would not die. Jesus went. Not because of Lazarus died, but because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. They thought he went because, see, he's crying because he really loved Lazarus. No, just because of his unbelief, because he already said to his disciples when he was leaving from the place, when he told his disciples, Lazarus is dead, he said, I'm glad that he's dead, that he will see the glory of God. So he's not weeping now because the oh, Lord is dead. He already know. And he said, uh, for this Caucasian, I'm glad that you so that you can see the glory. So he wasn't coming to weep. But their response brought him to tears. Their unbelief. Come on. That's always caused Jesus to be grieved and weep. Come on, somebody. The believer causes the what? The believer causes the Holy Spirit grief or pain when he or she ignores his presence, his voice, or his leading. The believer causes what? The Holy Spirit grief or pain when he or she ignores his presence. His voice or his leading. Romans 8, verse 5 to 17. Romans 8, verse 5 to 17. Says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life. Life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, it's hostile towards God. It's an offense to Him. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Hallelujah. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed, huh? yes. if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. But in the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, we are not, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive what? The spirit of adoption by whom you cry out and the Father, the Spirit himself be a witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then hears, hears of God and join ears with Christ. If there's a condition, if we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Come on, somebody. Look at Galatians 5, verse 16 to 25. Galatians 5, verse 16 to 25. And it says, I say then, this is Paul speaking to the church of Galatia. He says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are what? Contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. And if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are evident. What are the works of the flesh? These are the works you must cease from. You want to know Sabbath. These are the works you must cease from that you will not be under the law. He said the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like is that there is more, but anything like that, he says, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Hallelujah. But he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? This is what you need to do to have it now. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law against such things. And he says, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 6, verse 7 to 9. Galatians 6, verse 7 to 9. And it says, do not be deceived. Look at that. Do not be deceived. God is not not for whatsoever among souls that he will also reap. For he who serves to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who serves to his spirit will of the flesh reap everlasting life. So let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Come on, somebody. Grieving the Holy Spirit leads to resisting the Holy Spirit. That's the second point in that point of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You move from grieving Him to now resisting Him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Acts 7 verse 31. Acts 7 verse 31. Peter here declared, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, 
You always what? You always what? Resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Come on, somebody. The history of Israel is the story of a people who repeatedly refused to obey their God and His revealed word. Instead of submitting to the ways and instructions of God's word, they followed after the ways and lifestyle and ungodly people around them. They killed and persecuted the prophets. Come on. Who called them to repentance and who prophesied the coming of Christ and his judgment. Even so, we see today among us professing Christians doing the same. Come on. Those who profess to be Christians, quote unquote Christians, doing the same. Huh? Yes. So from moving from quenching, grieving the Holy Spirit to resisting the Holy Spirit, now they're going to quenching the Holy Spirit. The word quench means to put out, to extinguish, to cool down, to throw cold water, and to put out heat or intensity. To turn off one's passion or desire. To turn off one's passion or desire. Hebrews 3, verse 7 to 13. Hebrews 3, verse 7 to 13. Hallelujah. It says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will, hear his voice. Do not what? Hard in the heart as in the rebellion in the day of child in the wilderness where your fathers what? Your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. My God. Hallelujah. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest beware brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God hallelujah but exhort one another day, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. My God, my God, hello, somebody. Hallelujah. You've got to get this one. He says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Harden your heart. It's quenching the Holy Spirit. It's actually turning the Holy Spirit from ministering to you. Because he resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Come on, somebody. And that quenching of the Holy Spirit, doing things that made the Holy Spirit no zeal and passion to help you and to come after you, it puts you in a bad place. Hello. The fourth position that is in the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit is the hardening of one's heart. The what? Hardening of one's heart to the voice leading to the voice, to his voice, to his leading, or to his words. To what? His voice, to his leading, or to his words. Hallelujah. They, 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 they see overwhelming evidence and evidence and still demanding more proof. Come on. They have seen what? Overwhelming evidence, overwhelming evidence still and still demanding more proof. Come on now. That is the hardening, the 
look at Luke chapter 11, verse 14 to 16. Luke chapter 11, verse 14 to 16. Hallelujah, it says, And he was casting out a demon, and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out, that the mute spoke, and multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by the Ezebub, the rule of demons. And others, testing him, saw from him a sign from heaven. Oh, come on now. They have seen overwhelming evidence and still demanding huh? more. more proof. Yeah, that's the sign you've ever seen. Come on, somebody. Hello. That in itself shows that they have hardened their hearts. 11 verse 20. Luke 11 verse 20. The Lord told them that the kingdom had arrived amongst them. They are looking for the kingdom, but they say, it's already here. But because you have hardened your hearts, you are not seeing it. Come on. He said in verse 20, If I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. In other words, it is in your midst. Come on. 21 to 22. The Lord was telling them, Someone stronger is here. And they are not responding to that one in the right way. He says, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusts and divides his voice. And others say, this man who was demon possessed and knew the demons could not be cast out of the man, and he also received his speech. If a stronger man was not present to relieve him under the hand of Satan. Amen. But they did not acknowledge this. Come on. Amen. Signs that the Lord told them would be given to them was the sign of Jonah in 29 to 32. He says, None will be given to them but the sign of Jonah. Because he says, One who is greater than Jonah is here. And they wouldn't listen. He said, the whole city of Nineveh listened to Jonah and they were saved. Yet God is here, greater than Jonah, and they would not listen. Yeah. Oh, come on now. No room in their hearts for the message. Come on. They are following the advice of their fathers. Since he's telling them the truth, why did they believe? He says, you don't listen to the word of God because you don't belong to God. They arm their hearts to the word of God because they don't belong to God. God chooses to show mercy to some and chooses to hide the hearts to some who refuse to listen to him. That's in Romans 9, verse 18. Romans 9, verse 18. Huh? Yes. My God. Romans 9, verse 18. It says, Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills he hardens. Come on. In other words, he hardens, we choose to harden. And have mercy on whom he will have mercy. Come on, somebody. Look at 11 verse 7. Romans 11 verse 7. Praise God. It says, What well, then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it. The rest were blinded. Come on. Why were they blinded? The hardness of their heart. They have seen all the evidence of God's power and still choose not to believe. Come on now. Yes. Hello. Yes. Those who close their minds and have their hearts against them, unbelief causes the hardness of the hearts. What? 
Unbelief causes the hardness. Ephesians 4, verse 18. Unbelief causes hardness of the heart. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of what? The ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Look at Ephesians 4. No, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. It says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. So up till now they still read the Old Testament and they don't understand it. And there are people that don't understand it, preaching it. And bringing people under law instead of Christ. Because the veil is still over their eyes because of what? Unbelief. My God, my God. And belief leads to hardening of the heart towards God, towards the truth, and it leads one to disobedience. Leads one to what? Disobedience. disobedience. Romans 2, verse 8 to 11. Romans 2, verse 8 to 11. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey what? Unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jews first, and also of the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. Come on, somebody. That's a powerful word right there. And we got to take it to thought, take it to heart and understand. You keep doing those things, eventually the Holy Spirit will keep up on you. The Holy Spirit just lets you know. Lose you to what you want. Because what did the Lord say to Israel? I will do to them what they said. I will do to them. They said we're going to die here. Oh, you better be a dying minister. And I said, all right, you're going to get what you say. You keep on pushing what you say. You're going to get what you say. I hope you can handle it. And sure enough, they couldn't handle it. Because God had a different plan for them. But they were set on their plan. They were set in their ways. Oh, God. Their hearts were hardened to the truth. And now the consequences were upon them. And it was irre irreversible. Come on. You can't keep denying the work of the Holy Spirit and be saved. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. You can't keep denying it and be saved. You have to embrace it to be saved. But you can't keep denying it. Resisting it, quenching the work. Come on. Hiding your heart to it and think it's still going to work out for you. Judgment day is coming. Hello, somebody. Where everyone must give account before God. And it's no time for excuses. It's a time that only those who have met the qualification. Hallelujah. Make the requirements will be included. Those who have done things that the word of God says, those who practice such things shall not inherit, will not receive any blood. Because there's no partiality with God. He don't care who is doing it. The same result will occur. Hello. And so if you want to change the result, you must repent. Change your ways before God and our thinking that will embrace what is good and what is fruitful to God. Come on. Amen. 
Give God a praise in the house. Okay, Saturday we're going to pray. Time to release you here. Praise God. I believe the Spirit of God is minister the word to you. Now you must decide what you're going to do with that word. What are you going to do with that word? If you keep going the same way, he said, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as they did in the rebellion. And the Lord swore in his wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And he says, with whom was he angry? With whom was he grieved? Wasn't it with those who sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Was it with those who tested and proved him and provoked him? Come on. And he said, because of their unbelief, they did not enter. God raised the witnesses there, Jacob, Caleb, and Joshua, who spoke to them and told them, we are more than able to possess that land. God is with us. God has, is not with them. So let us go and possess them. But they did not believe. They did not believe. They were of a different spirit. They were of a different spirit. Father, we pray against every evil spirit. You said we must not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they be of God or not. There's no good tree can produce evil fruit, and no evil tree can produce good fruit. And said, by their fruit you will know them. For out of a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good things that evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring forth evil things. He said you should not eat of any that bring forth corrupt things for corrupt things corrupt people. My God, but those who hear those that hear you will be saved. Those who hear those who hear you will be saved. And so I pray grace. I pray grace upon the hearers today. And they will not only hear, but be doers of the word. For it's the doers of the word that are truly blessed. And I pray that they will not allow the, 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 the pressures of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, hallelujah, and the deceitfulness of sin, hallelujah, to come upon them. But that they will walk circumspect before you. Embracing your truth in all its holiness. And seeing your life shining through them. That the world will see that they are indeed true children of the living God. We pray against all the forces of darkness. Distortion, illusion, confusion. Hallelujah. All delusion in any sense to, to draw them away, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils and demons, hypocrisy and falsehood, and pretend to be broke. Hallelujah. Into your life so that you will release Hallelujah. the word to take deep root in your spirit, being grafted in your hearts, the full measure of your truth. That it will flush out everything that is not of you. For there is no lie of truth. Hallelujah. We bless you and we embrace your presence. And we thank you for hearing us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. All right, we give you a chance of swan and we release you. Praise God. Time to release you. In Jesus' name. Those who are watching online, they're watching Increasing Faith, Deliverance Ministry International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. We here declare the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. You wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth.
And so we encourage you to log on to our website. It's Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L dot O-R-G. That's Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L dot O-R-G. And you should surely see our prophetic statement, apostolic address, Hollywood visionary statement, uh, prophetic word declared over the ministry and over those who connect with us. As you watch, you'll be showing sure enriched in your hearts with the Lord. And you need to see mighty signs and wonders break forth in your life as you embrace the word of faith, the word of power, the word of truth. You magnify your life and it will set you free and free indeed. Praise God. So we ask you to look out for our live stream on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard Fagan. You'll be plugged in to the live stream every time we go live. And the recordings are there on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to Richard Fagan. Halloween is also there. All the live streams are also posted there. So whichever medium you use, you have the stream there for you. Either on the website, Facebook, or YouTube, or all the above, or wherever you see fit. It's all there to give you all the material and resources to be your most holy faith in the Lord. Hallelujah. So until next time, we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's lift your hands and us pray. Father, let's thank you for your word. We pray that as we walk by faith and not by sight, we bind increase and release over your people. Those who are sick and oppressed will feel your healing virtues flowing through your body now. Change the doctor's report, change the amnestics report, change the, 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 the diagnosis or the diagnosis of their health right now, that they will gain good testimony, good reports. For you said, by faith, the elders obtain that good report. And you said, we are by faith and not by sight. And if there are any sick, they call for the elders of the church. They pray the prayer of faith and they be healed in Jesus' name. And they clear healing in their bodies, healing over their circulation system, their digestive system, their respiratory system, their heart ocean, their massage, their circulation system, their reproductive system, their muscular skeletal system to be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, there was sister be healed right now. His kids and tissue be healed. All that's be healed. In Jesus' name. And we believe that your word is quick and it's powerful and it's sharp and then it twitches so it will between bone and marrow and join between the soul and the spirit, between the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. That we have seen our grace was much more abound than you can far or do anything the devil has ever done to us and we believe in your power we thank you and give you the praise in Jesus' name Hallelujah. come on give him the praise right now Hallelujah. 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 praise God praise God time to release you now praise God thank you for joining us online and for those who are here praise God thank you for being here we got another program coming up so we got to shift our gears and, and be prepared for the next thing that we're going to do in this house. So we thank you for being with us and we look forward to seeing you next time on this channel, on this frequency. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you. And you too. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and, you too. and be gracious unto you. And you too. May the Lord make His countenance upon you and, you and give you His peace. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. Bless you.